goat like any other living organism must consume a good feed because it is a live organism and it should con consume good and balanced feed because it is required to support its body functions as well as productive functions like uh, lactation pregnancy and a normal growth day to day growth and all essential require nutrients which are required they should be given on a regular or semi regular basis to goats and if uh, intake is very is slightly low for a longer period it leads to deficiency disease and ultimately metabolic disease and sometimes when there is uh, uh, in the opposite of that deficiency disease sometimes when nutrient is given in excess it leads to toxicity disease the so clinical signs that depends on uh, nutrition to uh, that nutrient to nutrient so in some nutrients clear, uh, specific signs are uh, are observed in some nutrients a common signs are observed so first disease uh, i will be discussing uh, this is pregnancy toxemia this is also known as ketosis or fatty liver disease fatty liver disease we will also discuss it later individually also so pregnancy toxemia that is a very important metabolic disease of goat and sheep and this mostly occurs in the last 6 weeks of gestation in does and especially it has been observed in a dog with multiple fetuses so there are many factors which are associated with this pregnancy toxemia first of all is the pregnancy uh, presence of multiple fetuses second is under nourishment under nourishment during late pregnancy if we are unable to provide a proper balanced diet to the that goats in the, during late pregnancy when it is more and more required by the uh, for rapid growth of fetus so the pregnancy toxemia may occur another factor is addition of a stress stress can be any stress can be physical mental the neurological or apparent so uh, likewise severe weather uh, in some areas we don't have covered areas for to keep uh, goats and uh, 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 at least uh, i know in the northern part of india there are many uh, uh, especially in rajasthan haryana punjab there are many people who keep their uh, herds of goats uh, having around 700 800 goats uh, and they transport it from one state to another state from uh, and they uh, and they face many problems of weather and uh, uh, immediate uh, changes in weather conditions that lead to stress in that particular pregnant goats or sudden changes in feed is also associated with the uh, area specific areas like uh, if we go in rajasthan the dry feed is more available uh, and if we go more towards the northern northern parts uh, of uh, haryana punjab uh, himachal pradesh and the uh, western U uttar pradesh uh, and uh, uh, all other uh, eastern parts also so uh, animal may may be given uh, more uh, concentrate diet or may be given more uh, uh, green diet so uh, changes in feed also lead to stress and it it is also one of the important factor for the pregnancy toxemia mortality rate in pregnancy toxemia is very high so we have to be very very specific for uh, for uh, upkeeping of nutrient status in pregnancy toxemic cases so clinical signs clinical signs in pregnancy toxemia are the involvement of cns that means central nervous system initially animal it becomes isolated from uh, other animals there is mild depression mild depression uh, and uh, some evidence in some uh, research papers and some clinical articles evidence of blindness is also observed in which animal runs into objects or uh, fellow fellow animals and shows little or no reaction when approached and it wanders aimlessly and uh, aimlessly in, in a herd or at a place where it is kept so dullness and depression if not attended uh, by the uh, person uh, or a herd manager 
it goes uh, uh, progressively severe and animal become recumbent there is reluctance to move eventually sternal and lateral recumbency and if not uh, treated at a early stage or a stage when it achieves uh, the lateral recumbency animal may become comatose and eventually it, it dies so pregnancy toxemia has to be checked uh, in, at a very early stage in some papers in some clinical article there has been reported by some authors the chewing teeth grinding and vigorous licking movements these are also nervous signs in pregnancy toxemia so a veterinarian has to be different uh, to be very very uh, uh, alert in diagnosing pregnancy toxemia with polio encephalomalacia uh, hypocalcemia toxic mastitis grain overload listeriosis and lead poison these are the diseases which have the similar signs with pregnancy toxemia but they has to be differentially diagnosed on basis of clinical signs and uh, diagnostic tools treatment uh, uh, includes a symptomatic treatment glucose has to be replaced and re dehydration has to be addressed acid ba base balance has to be uh, maintained and reducing glucose demand in some cases where uh, uh, animal is well fed but uh, uh, when uh, in some severe cases when uh, this this particular reducing glucose demand cases occurs when animal uh, is in a, a lateral recumbency and to save a dog is more important than to save the uh, fetus of the animal then we will have to conduct the abortion compulsory exploratory cesarean and abortion has to be uh, uh, performed to save that uh, that goat so this this is uh, uh, very important uh, if it is life threatening otherwise it should not be then lactating dogs will initially re uh, reduce milk production refuse uh, Uh, this is fatty liver lactational ketosis this uh, we will be discussing next disease and this is similar to pregnancy toxemia this is lactational ketosis in which lactating dose which initially reduce milk production then it will refuse to eat grains and then uh, this will ultimately consequently reduce milk production dog will rapidly lose body conditions body temperature pulse rate respiratory rate, rate they are within normal limits but due to decrease in uh, grain uh, decrease in uh, uh, grain feeding the ruminal activity may diminish and in severe cases nervous ketosis signs may be observed just like as as we we discuss in pregnancy toxemia so treatment is very similar similar to pregnancy toxemia in some cases in some articles uh, insulin therapy with glucose infusion have been reported supportive therapy includes vitamin uh, b complex and uh, uh, mineral supplementation and uh, dietary modification has to be done to increase glucose availability to that lactating lactating dog next is milk fever milk milk fever is very important disease in uh, goats it's very important it is also uh, experienced at at the time of peak lactation and that's why it's known as lactational eclampsia in when uh, nervous symptoms are observed so initially the in periparturant hypoglycemic cases or milk fever initially animal becomes nervous ataxic uh it 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 uh, uh in the normal locomotion is not observed ataxia is observed and animal becomes hyperactive it uh, it can be observed by herd manager very very uh, easily if he is a keen observer it can be easily observed and dog is hyper irritable and it may show muscle twitching of lips eyelids and ears trembling may be observed you can see trembling or twitching of uh, other muscles of body may also occur convulsions may occur in the lateral stages 
and dough becomes sternly recumbent and laterally recumbent in the final stages head may be turned back to the flank head may be turned back like uh, that is very docile uh, uh, that uh, docile symptom and less severely affected those sub clinical hypoglycemia they don't exhibit uh, turning back to flank they only show small lethargy they only show poor appetite and poor milk production so what in milk fever uh, we can see animal is very cold to touch animal is uh, initially inappetent and then it becomes anorectic body temperature initially to maintain homeostasis will be slightly elevated but then it will be decreased and pupils dilated they will be uh, hypo responsive very less response and then uh, if we uh, uh, give a flashlight to them they will not respond pupils become remains dilated all time sometimes the hind legs are splayed out behind them sometimes heart is very hard to hear pulse is very weak very weak yeah, even uh, uh, i could not uh, observe in some cases of goats uh, uh, pulse uh, uh, i could not observe by using stethoscope so death uh, may occur in a se severely affected ca cases uh, and death may follow bloat regurgitation of all ruminal contents and respiratory aspiration and the drenching mm -hmm. pneumonia also may occur so the disease can be as short as for few hours likewise the herd manager reports that the particular uh, milk fever is observed in particular uh, some of the animals and animal may die or animal may die within a few hours or animal may die within if it has to it it is being treated but not treated with gel or if animal is non responsive it may take couple of days to recover or re uh, it uh, if it is uh, not responding that that animal may die so most frequently it is observed as sudden death and uh, sometimes some uh, uh, hard owner they reports that uh, i uh, i my my dog was very okay when i left it uh, at 11 pm in the night but in the morning it was found dead and that's why the it, uh, most of the uh, most uh, consequently the animals may may would have died by due to milk fever serum calcium levels are decreased normally a serum calcium level is 8 to 12 mg per deciliter but it decreased less than 6 as as name suggests hypo calcemia is observed to help in diagnosing hypoglycemia in a sudden case sudden death the important question arises how we can observe how we can diagnose this case uh, if it is if it is uh, of a milk fever how we can diagnose uh, if it uh, uh, if, if it was found sudden uh, if uh, found sudden death so in that case fluid from the eye chamber can be obtained and calcium concentration up to 48 hours after death it can be examined the fluid from eye chamber this is very important for a veterinarian uh, if we, you have to make a post mortem report uh, for a high, for a milk fever case then you will have to examine fluid from eye chambers and concentration up to 48 hours can be analyzed so hypo uh, hypocalcemia may be uh, examined by uh, veterinarians and it should be differentially diagnosed from nervous signs nervous signs like polyencephalomalacia advanced green overload toxic mastitis lead poisoning and listeria as i i discussed earlier also to all the participants that most of the signs and symptoms of metabolic diseases are very similar and a veterinarian has to examine it uh, closely keenly and have to take some time for differential diagnosis of of uh, uh, any of all the metabolic diseases in case particularly in case of goats because in sheep some clinical signs may differ but in goats mostly Uh, clinical signs are mostly similar 
that's why some diseases are gone uh, are uh, go uh, are undiagnosed and uh, we may not be observe it keenly so in case of uh, milk fever or clinical case of hypocalcemia uh, careful slow intravenous calcium borogluconate solutions infusions are very uh, important uh, care has to be taken that it has to be given slow iv and then after a slow iv and after some recovery uh, we can give oral supplements as well as subcutaneous uh, calcium preparations many cases in many cases which has been reported by many uh, goat uh, uh, goat owners as well as goat uh, uh, veterinary practitioners that why not we are giving uh, 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 magnesium along with that so uh, normally in the case of hypocalcemic uh, we has to concentrate on con on correcting the value of calcium so myfex or my magnesium borogluconate um, can be replaced by cal calberol uh, or any other equivalent solutions of calcium directly so that it may give a early and a very good response so then comes because i was discussing about hypomagnesemia in the base slide also uh, treatment so hypomagnesemia is very important in goats although very uh, very much susceptible animals are sheep but goats are also susceptible equally so it may be uh, re, uh, it were it has been named as grass tetany lactation tetany or milk tetany so lactation lactating does or on a spring pasture which has been reared openly on a spring pasture are more susceptible and uh, grass tetany or lactation tetany as well as some uh, some kids which are being fed uh, by uh, on a milk replacer they may develop milk tetany due to hypomagnesemia so a low level of uh, uh, magnesium in blood of an animal it occurs in the early lactation period early lactation and if not attended early it may lead to life threatening problem and a severe tetanus like muscle spasm animal initially will be ataxic it will go ataxia it will give it ataxia then afterwards stiffness of the limbs stiffness of extremities and hyper excitability and this will be uh, increased and sometimes paddling response is seen seen in uh, goats affected with hypomagnesemia and you can easily uh, differentiate that paddling response and all the muscles you can see all the muscles of that animal are over stimulated all the muscles and that leads to st leg stiffness and muscle spasm so uh, goats goats like cattle and buffalo are very uh, have a very little ability to manage blood blood magnesium concentration so a uh, veterinarian has to be more and more uh, careful in maintaining magnesium concentrations if you can see this hyper excitability ataxia and a paddling response then you have to give uh, magnesium iv then uh, and orally as well as subcutaneous uh, doses has to be given but it has iv doses has to be given slowly drop by drop i have seen many cases uh, uh, reported by many veterinarians that they gave uh, intravenously uh, calcium magnesium borogluconate and uh, animal died immediately due to heart failure and that was due to that was due to uh, 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 faster intravenous uh, distribution of that drug so combination of low intake coupled with greater losses during early lactation that leads to hypomagnesemia so light like, like hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia must be treated as an emergency situation i have already mentioned earlier in uh, last slide last to last slide that hypocalcemia has to be dealt with calcium borogluconate and hypomagnesemia has to be dealt with intravenous administration of magnesium and calcium first iv then uh, subcard then oral and therapy uh, iv uh, therapy is rapid but if uh, 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 for any after an initial response from an animal 
then subcutaneous and oral supplements has to be given so that uh, that uh, hypomagnesemic technique doesn't relapse so next one is very important important disease or and uh, it has been important uh, it has been reported by most of the goat owners that comes to our hospital they feed them excessively they feed them waste materials or they feed them the kitchen waste of uh, uh, that has been uh, procured by the goat owners uh, from uh, uh, marriage uh, that has been left in the marriage or at functions and they can they give them they feed them and that due to that feeding excessive sugar or starch consume consumption is increased and that leads to grain overload and grain overload is observed as an is also observed as an emergency situation that after feeding of, the, of that kitchen waste to the animal owner leaves to his or her house then in the morning it comes and uh, 50 animals they died and other are exhibiting a symptoms of lactic acidosis so in this case lactic acid is overproduced and get accumulated that leads to decrease in ruminal ph as ruminal ph decreases lactobacillus lactobacillus will increase and that animal will become will show metabolic acidosis and all the fluids will be lost to rumen ruminal fluid concentration increases it may lead to tympani and so the overall body conditions become hydrate dehydrate and dehydration is observed so in that case Uh, you can give uh, in mild to moderate cases you can give symptomatic therapy fluid can be given along with the alkalizers like sodium bicarbonate has to be given so that it will uh, help in maintaining the ph from acidic to nearly normal in acute cases where the treatment is uh, uh, not responding acute in uh, the Uh, rumenotomy a surgical emptying of the rumen is uh, is recommended uh, in goats as well as in large in this similar case is observed in large animal like cattle buffalo and uh, so goats uh, so iv fluid along with emptying of uh, rumen and uh, rumen uh, uh, replacement of ruminal juice with that of uh, rumen from the healthy animal the ruminal cud has to be replaced alkalizing solution sodium bicarbonates uh, has to be given but this has to be done very uh, very cautiously because if more amount of alkalizing solutions are given it may lead to metabolic alkalosis and that is more severe and that leads to severely uh, uh, immediate death so this has to be uh, uh, very carefully uh, checked next one is uh, uh, in a goats white muscle disease or nutritional myer degeneration is observed this is lesser less common in uh, some areas but in some areas with hilly areas where the vitamin e and selenium deficiency is observed so the stiff limb disease may be observed so nutritional myer degeneration is due to uh, selenium and uh, vitamin e deficiency and it leads to acute muscle necrosis and so uh, during post mortem white colored muscle area may be observed that's why it's named as white muscle disease usually young fast growing kids are affected and but they this disease is also sometime observed in fully grown animals and anyway kids when they move they uh, they uh, feel pain and they uh, are reluctant to move but uh, the feeding is normal and uh, feeding normal but still uh, if not uh, observed uh, or uh, if not treated at an early stage uh, just a injection of vitamin e and selenium uh, if not uh, treated then the muscles degeneration will occur and uh, myofibrillation will occur and heart muscles will be hampered to supply blood to all whole body and it may lead to death so but in uh, it it occurs in very acute or uh, per acute cases uh, mostly if uh, it is diagnosed early then uh, injection of uh, selenium and vitamin e or oral feeding of selenium vitamin e will give good results uh, but
but excessive dose of vitamin e and selenium has to be avoided this uh, I, I i must uh, stress this uh, uh, or impress this because some people or some uh, veterinarians they give uh, uh, over doses of vitamin e and selenium then this lead to toxicity syndrome and the symptoms are similar but toxicity syndrome the next one is uh, also associated with the nervous symptoms nervous system that is polio and cephalomalacia it is a disease of ruminant animals and goat also and ruminant animals in uh, uh, cattle buffalo and uh, uh, goats and sheep they all are, are associated and uh, central nervous system is associated due to necrosis of cerebral cortex the cerebral cortex when animals are fed with high grain diets or pastured diets which have high grain then it lead to necrosis of uh, cerebral cortex due to deficiency syndromes so in this uh, blindness misorientation ataxia may be observed head may be elevated like this uh, excitement is very observed but initially it is observed afterwards excitement is replaced with dullness animal become dull uh, it may uh, it may confine itself to the one corner of that uh, herd or uh, head may be thrown back side just like uh, uh, we will we have to uh, check it or differentially diagnose with a ketotic animal legs may be extended but not uh, the legs may not be rigid but uh, in the later stages the nervous signs are occur and convulsions may occur an animal if not untreated or if it is a non responsive then death may occur uh, within few days not it is not an emergency or a sudden death case and uh, appetite is uh, uh, lost animal become uh, inappetent and then uh, anorectic and also animal is reluctant to drink water also although all the other parameters the normal systematic parameters are are lost are are normal but heart rate may be depressed and uh, uh, muscles of heart are involved at a later stages so uh, the what may be the possible cause in many papers many books uh, it has been written that polio and cephalomalacia is due to vitamin b1 deficiency which is vitamin b1 deficiency means thiamine enzyme thiamine enzyme that destroys thymine that has to be that thymine it is known to produce starch fermenting bacteria and if thiamine deficiency occurs the thiamine analog is also produced and it leads to excessive uh, tympani and starch is not fermented and it leads to metabolic reactions because the thymine it uh, uh, it gives it gives a sends a, a, uh, a particular signal a signal nervous signal to the hypothalamus and uh, so the flight and fright syndrome occurs and uh, selected necrosis of brain uh, that part of brain occurs and resulting in the clinical signs in some some nutritional situations it has been reported in one book so i included this line uh, that uh, excessive sulfur intake sulfur excessive sulfur there are some areas where sulfur intake is uh, high excessive sulfur intake by the from the pastured animal it and can also produce such similar clinical signs in some books it has been written so i included this one in our presentation so administration of large doses of thiamine intravenously intramuscular or intramuscularly at an early stage of disease it leads to recovery immediate recovery and if sometimes b1 injection b1 vitamin b1 injection it gives a response within minutes or to within a few hours but if in a later stage if if a owner is not uh, uh, active or alert then it brings a, a, to that animal that affected animal to a, 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 the veterinarian later on that uh, then it uh, uh, after the brain necrosis starts then animal is very hard to recover and veterinarian has to say, say sorry 
to the in that particular case one of the important other disease and economical disease uh, of uh, metabolic it sometimes there is there is some controversy some people take this as a nutritional deficiency some people take this as a bacterial or a viral or infectious disease but i have included this in metabolic disease also the, this mastitis some people say this is a managemental disease some people say this is an infective disease but ultimately uh, animal has to suffer and animal owner has to suffer so i have discussed this uh, mastitis in this particular lecture uh, because it mastitis as we all know is a very 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 i think 10 to 11000 crore loss uh, uh, economic disease and it is only due to the inflammation of mammary glands due to bacterial i have written bacterial but some cases it may be viral in some cases it may be other uh, cases also some other factors also other damage often caused by mastitis is a, is a one of the leading cause of culling in sheep and goat operations and any uh, owners we who maintain large animal large uh, um, uh, number of goats and sheep in their herds uh, they has to be very particular for mastitis and because nowadays uh, in many diseases the goat milk is very very precious uh, and uh, a goat owner he, he can earn millions if his or her herd is maintained as mastitis free if it is maintained uh, if it is affected with mastitis the goat owner will not earn anything will will and the risk of developing mastitis increases is with the poor management poor sanitary conditions some systemic infections may occur afterwards or some trauma to the uh, teats or some trauma to the udder uh, 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 or some trauma by uh, by the suckling uh, kids uh, to the dough that may lead to mastitis and mastitis may be per acute acute or chronic may be localized to one gland or both glands and uh, may be uh, localized to other and that may lead then ultimately lead to systemic infections and that has to be treated immediately uh, so that the herd can be uh, managed now the uh, this is one i think this is the last slide of my presentation and this is the most important slides because uh we keep on discussing about diseases but we have to prevent these diseases uh if a goat owner has to really grow then it has to prevent this uh, it has to be it has to manage its herd uh, so that uh, they will not uh, they will have to save the veterinary uh, medical cost disease cost and it has to be managed well. so nutrition is very vital because i am uh, i have uh, included these lines in here new nutrition is very vital for raising healthy livestock and for proper reproductive management reproduction is good animal is good flushing or feeding animals so that they can gain weight prior to breeding will help them to conceive if animal is unable to conceive then it is of no use so reproductive management is very important and for reproductive management nutrition is most important so forages should be used as much as much as possible for feeding goats but producers will may lead to supplements because some some goats are used for uh, uh, meat keeping so they will have to supplement that uh, goats with the protein or energy depending upon demand of nutritional demand of that particular animals an important has uh, important thing has to be maintained in supplementation is during late gestation or during lactation late gestation so to as so as to prevent the pregnancy toxemia during late lactation because lactation tetany and uh, hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia are observed during lactation during growth of replacement breeding stock because when one has to replace the breeding stock then uh, at that time growth is very important and uh, and prior, prior to breeding the nutrition is very important we has to maintain we have to maintain a proper well managed diet a nutritionist or a, a veterinarian who is specifically who is very very uh, uh, 
familiar with the nutrition of goats has to be consulted so uh, normal normally mineral mixture minerals vitamins has to be given round the clock in a it has to be mixed in a feed in a feed block or it has to be given loose in a manger or a or a particular place where animals are fed because uh, and so deficiency as we have discussed it is mostly observed in the pastured animal which has which are reared open if it has uh, if an animal is fed at a one close confine confinement then the mineral minerals vitamins has can be controlled so goats should be fed minerals formulated for goats ye this is very important uh, some people they give the formulations that has been designed for sheep and so the results are not so good so we have to maintain uh, we has to consult a goat specialist and uh, uh, for who can give us a good balance uh, uh, mineral formula or uh, designed for only for goats then it should be fed with that minerals and vitamins so proper mineral nutri nutrition can enhance as we all know being a veterinarians or a veterinary or progressive farmers we all know that if we give a proper diet proper mineral nutrition then it increases the immune system of livestock of animal and they are more prone to uh, they are more less prone to any diseases or more resistant to disease so balanced ration at appropriate stages is very 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 important i must impress if feeding is good you don't have to uh, contact a veterinarian frequently a veterinarian has to be contacted so that uh, but it uh, it uh, we can uh, uh, minimize his or her visits by keeping a good uh, general management and a nutritional status of a herd and any change in feeding should be consulted with the veterinarian as soon as possible so that we uh, we can control any loss it that loss loss may be due to the production losses due to the infectious losses or due to parasitic lo loads because any feeding if if it is changed then parasites uh, load may increase so we will have to give the dewormers and the mineral mixtures uh, may may not, not be palatable by the that particular herd so we will have to change it so a keen observation is important uh, so prevent to so as to prevent the diseases on in animals so thank you